Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Tomas J. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. AutoLine Network did a video giving grades for all companies making EVs, and I just wanna highlight some key interesting facts. The Hyundai Group, which consists of Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis, right now 10% of all cars that they sell are electric vehicles. When it comes to Ford, EVs currently only account for about 2.6% of Ford's overall sales. VW's ID4 sales are plummeting in the first half of this year, down 30% compared to the first half of last year. And this is not an inventory problem. VW had 153 days of inventory of the ID4, whereas Tesla's days of inventory is four. Volvo, which includes Polestar, their EVs account for 15% of total auto sales, the highest of any traditional automaker. Mercedes is outselling BMW in electric vehicles with only one product, the EQS, that costs over $100,000. Remember, BMW has been dabbling in EVs for nearly 10 years. And lastly, Honda, Stellantis, Subaru, and Mitsubishi did not sell one single full BEV in the first half of this year. Here we have a pretty fun chart. It's just the last two years of data of Tesla's stock price in the blue and Tesla's price to earnings ratio in the red. Remember, PE is just the stock price divided by the earnings per share. The point here is that over the last two years, Tesla stock price has increased over 200%, and at that same time, with that as the numerator, the denominator has actually increased significantly more than that because of course the denominator has to be higher than the numerator for that number to actually compress, that number being the PE ratio. Now yes, going forward, we should absolutely expect lower PE ratios overall because now we're in a monetary tightening scenario instead of a monetary easing as we've seen for a while now, we also have interest rates going up. With that said though, if you love Tesla stock when the PE ratio was over 1000 within the last two years, you should absolutely love it when the PE ratio is below 100. That's a perfect segue to Tesla's 10Q that was released this morning. Yes, I did read through the whole thing, so I'll give you the main takeaways. I did skip over the litigation part as that takes a little bit longer to read and understand. So if Rob does not cover that tonight, then I'll make sure to bring it up tomorrow. Tesla's deferred revenue, or the money it has not yet recognized because certain features have not yet been delivered, mainly driven by FSD, amounted to $2.66 billion at the end of Q2. Tesla is expecting to recognize $1.02 billion of this revenue over the next 12 months. This will provide a nice boost to earnings over the next four quarters. Tesla's fair market value of its digital assets, currently Bitcoin and Doge, sits at $222 million at the end of Q2. At the end of the quarter, Tesla only had $9 million of total unrecognized stock-based compensation expense remaining related to the 2018 CEO Performance Award. Tesla does have other performance-based grants that total $283 million, and these are also stock-based compensation. However, this is separate from the 2018 CEO Performance Award, and this amount, the $283 million, will be recognized over the next three years. We got an update on Giga New York. On February 1st this year, Tesla reported they met and exceeded their annual requirements for jobs and investments in Buffalo and for New York State. Tesla is currently in excess of capital expenditure and employment targets, and they do not expect any issues meeting the obligations in the years to come. Tesla is currently expecting capital expenditures to be between six and eight billion dollars for 2022, 2023, and 2024. This is up slightly from five to seven billion dollars in prior years. Tesla believes it'll continue to be self-funded as long as macro factors support their current trend in sales. Tesla did also say, however, as I said earlier, they continue to evaluate cash needs and they may decide it's best to raise additional capital to fund the rapid growth of the business. So just remember, it's not a bad sign if Tesla raises capital in the future, it just means Tesla wants to grow faster and thinks that ROI at the time makes sense. Here we get to the portion where we see Tesla continually increasing its efficiencies. It really is very impressive. Tesla's services and other revenue increased $901 million in the first half of this year compared to the same period in 2021, mainly driven by increases in used vehicle revenue. We've touched on this before, but remember, Tesla gets to capture its used vehicle activity, whereas legacy OEMs, their dealers actually capture those revenue and profits. So as there are more used Teslas on the road into the future, you know what this will mean for Tesla's bottom line. 
Tesla did incur idle capacity charges of $168 million from the Shanghai shutdowns and Giga Texas ramping during quarter two alone. Tesla's gross margin for energy generation and storage increased from 2.5% in quarter two of last year to 11.2% in quarter two of this year due to higher deployments of the Powerwall, which operate at higher gross margins when compared to Megapacks. Tesla's R&D expenses have decreased as a percent of revenue to 4% in the first six months of this year. In the first half of 2021, Tesla's R&D expenses were 6% of revenue. So Tesla's R&D expenses are decreasing proportionately as a percent of revenue, despite expanding product roadmaps and new technology. The same theme is playing out with Tesla's SG&A expenses, which have decreased from 9% down to 5% due to operational efficiency. And Tesla incurred a $36 million expense in quarter two for employee terminations. Tesla's other income did take a $17 million hit due to fluctuations in foreign exchange rates. So my biggest takeaways from the 10Q are twofold. First, we can expect Tesla to recognize over $1 billion in deferred revenue over the next year, which once again will be a boost to earnings per share numbers. And two, somehow Tesla's operating efficiencies continue to improve. You just saw with R&D and SG&A expenses, as a percent of revenue, they continue to decrease. All the while, all of their product roadmaps and factory launches and new technologies implemented, that is growing seemingly exponentially, but the money it costs Tesla to actually do that as a percent of revenue continues to decrease. This is exactly what you want to see as a Tesla stock investor. Just so you know, there's all kinds of speculation right now about what's going on with Tesla's expansion in Shanghai. Where will this next factory actually be located? This was the image shared by Wuwa of where the potential land may be for this expansion of Giga Shanghai. I just wanna clarify, so far, absolutely nothing is official. It's all just speculation. Most importantly though, from this recent video from Wuwa, in the description box, he goes over a long explanation of the back and forth between Tesla and the Chinese government. Full video will be linked below. Just wanted to highlight it concludes. So whether an agreement has been reached between Tesla and the government is yet to be confirmed by Tesla officially and communicated by the local government. So all just speculation. I also wanted to touch on these rumors that are going around now. According to Automotive News Europe, Tesla already had a contract for Herbert Diess and a position that was ready to be signed by Diess, thus freeing Elon who wanted to focus on his position as chairman of the company. First of all, Elon does not want to focus on being chairman of the company. He wants to focus on engineering and solving actual problems. Further than that though, according to a report from Automobile Voca just today, Herbert Diess will continue to work for VW after his departure. He will remain as a regular consultant and until the end of his contract that he just renegotiated within the last few years that expires in autumn 2025. So I certainly think it's possible that Deese and VW work out some sort of buyout for the remainder of this contract, but as of today, the reporting is saying that he's actually going to fulfill the contract in some consulting role until the end of 2025. So to anyone thinking that Deese is going to sign a contract with Tesla in the coming weeks, I wouldn't be so sure. And all that Elon had to say on this matter, software is the key to the future. A lot of people were getting very excited over the weekend from this tweet. Elon said, excited to work with Tesla service to enable same hour service as often as possible, I would highlight applying Formula One pit crew techniques to Teslas. Not to burst anyone's bubble here as maybe now is the time that these F1 strategies make a real difference, but go back to 2015, Elon actually brought on Kenny Honkamer who spent 26 years in F1 to do exactly what Elon is now tweeting about. The point is these Formula One techniques have been an idea at Tesla for the last seven years and we all know how the service has been. It really just depends on the region. Some cases it's great, other cases it's not so great. With that said though, I'm much more optimistic now for the simple fact that Tesla will have more cars on the road, more data of what's going wrong, what parts does it need to have available, what are the most common service issues for each different vehicle. The more data it has, the better it can handle this service situation. And early on, it's just very hard to do with very limited data. So hopefully over the next few years, these techniques do really make a real world difference. If we've learned anything about Elon, it's that he's not always on time, but he almost always delivers. Reddit user Javi Quinn shared this video of the Model X showcasing the screen tilt feature. 
First time I've seen it on a Model X, but further people in the comments that took delivery of a refreshed Model X even in June are saying they do not have this feature. So it may be that the brackets are installed, but once again, the motors weren't installed, possibly indicating there could be a retrofit available later as supplies become available. But for now, it seems like a fingers crossed situation for new Model X owners taking delivery if they will have this feature. If you're one of these people, please let us know below what's going on. In Tobias Lin's latest flyover of Giga Berlin, he caught another test vehicle in the deep crimson color. This is clearly a very rough test first run iteration of this paint color. So I would not draw too much from this, but it's exciting to see that tests are underway. Corey Steuben from Monroe Live shared this video with a great caption, nice cans of the 4680 Model Y structural pack teardown. In this video, I counted 34 4680 cells, which lowers my confidence in the 828 cell figure for this pack because 828 does not divide easily by 34. Monroe is using a dry ice blaster to actually reveal the 4680 cells. Elon commented on a new video shared by Tesla Twitter, single piece casting reduces weight, greatly simplifies the factory, increases ride quality and reduces road noise. On FSD Beta 10.13, Elon said it may be the end of this week. The team is working hard on it. He added, it should be a major improvement with respect to complex left turns. If you guys were here last week, you may remember what I said about Redwood. I truly believe it is an absolute American national treasure. People will understand this toward the back half of this decade. Today, we learned this. It's set to spend $3.5 billion on a battery materials plant in Nevada. It's currently under construction just outside of Reno, and it's expected to produce the key ingredients needed to make the batteries that power electric vehicles, this refining process for cathodes and anodes that America desperately needs to get on board with to stop being so reliant on China. Even domestically mined lithium likely would need to be shipped to China or elsewhere in Asia before making its way into a battery cell here in the States. Today, China makes around 80% of the world's cathode material and more than 90% of its anode material. Redwood says come 2025, the company expects to be producing enough cathode materials and copper foil to support roughly 1 million EVs every year. More importantly, JB said Redwood expects to be able to source around 30% or more of the lithium and nickel and 100% of the cobalt Redwood needs to make these cathode materials from the company's growing recycling operation. This is the pathway to building a closed loop battery ecosystem here in America. And yes, Panasonic is slated to be the company's first copper foil customer starting later this year. Who does Panasonic make batteries for in Nevada? You already know the answer. Tesmanian did an article on Tesla's Q2 data and the point is Tesla has a 3% market share of all United States auto sales. Now, this is important to remember as Tesla trends toward 20% of auto sales, we are still very early in the game. So if you feel like you're late to Tesla stock, we're still just getting started. In Europe and China, Tesla is slightly below 2% of the overall auto market. Once again, though, we had Shanghai shut down and Berlin is just getting warmed up. So Tesla over that 3% market share in the US and Canada, but the point here is usually on the new technology adoption S-curve wave, things start to get really exciting between the five to 10% adoption. So we're very close to that tipping point. Now, we don't need to get into Elon's personal life here on the channel. It really just feels grimy to me. That said, I do want you to know Elon has denied these crazy accusations that the Wall Street Journal has stooped to a new low in reporting. To prove it, he also shared a picture that was apparently from last night of him having a good time with Sergey Brin, so all is well, reports are false. I'm only sharing this little bit so you know that now even the Wall Street Journal has also run many hit pieces against Elon. What does he say we should do? Call them out on it, I guess. 
Tesla is currently installing the first supercharging station in Turkey, and this is the first time I've ever seen these little designations on the top telling you what version they are. These are V2, up to 150 kilowatts. Let me know if you've seen these designations anywhere else. Hands down when it comes to EVs, I think this is the best idea GM has had. This is a new free online chat tool to help educate new and potential EV customers. GM just launched EV Live, a free online platform that connects EV owners or consumers who have questions about ZEVs and trucks with an expert who can answer them. A GM VP of EVs said, addressing common misconceptions about EVs will accelerate widespread adoption. We saw a need for accessible, credible, and engaging sources of info to empower consumers to adopt EVs and appreciate their many benefits. I have been wanting Tesla to do this in a more direct fashion now for years. The platform will have EV specialists in a live studio alongside EVs in simulated charging scenarios. They'll answer questions through voice or text chat and will have two-way audio equipment and one-way live video so consumers can watch as the expert demonstrates a charging connection as an example. Now, granted, I'm not sure how well something like this can scale. That said, there are so many people that aren't on YouTube, they're not on Twitter, they're not aware of the Tesla community and all of the information we're all trying to disseminate. So something like this being another onboard ramp for EV education is an awesome idea, so I don't say it often, but props to GM. And last up for today, Elon reminds us, self-driving electric cars will be all that matters. Gas car without autonomy will be like riding a horse and using a flip phone. It still happens, but it's a niche. That'll do it for today. Please like the video if you did. Hope you have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.